Alrighty, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate, and welcome back to another weather forecast discussion, this time for February 25th, 2023. Now, a lot of things have changed here over the past, I, I want to say 24 hours, realistically, because that was the last time since you and I have talked. If you haven't watched my video yesterday, I highly recommend you do. It's a doozy. It's been a, uh, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a thing. This forecast leading up to this event has been crazy. And so if you want to know all the in-depth characteristics as to what makes this event really tick, as to what the limiting factors to this event are, I highly recommend you go watch it. But we're going to try and go over just a general idea as to what has been happening leading up to today, as well as what you are seeing on your screen right now, which uh, your eyes are not fooling you. That is a four out of five on the severe weather scale for Western Oklahoma. So let's just get straight into it. Uh, if you're in the light greens, just general thunderstorms. If you're in the dark green, it is a one out of five in the severe weather scale. If you're in the yellow, it's a two out of five in the severe weather scale. Orange is a three out of five. And then red is a four out of five. And that is a moderate risk. So green, or I should say dark green is marginal. Yellow is slight. Orange is enhanced. And the red is a moderate. We'll zoom it in here and we can kind of show you all that realistically it's areas from Altus all the way up to, uh, I would say, south and east of Woodward and then further east over there towards central portions of Oklahoma. Uh, this is going to be more of a strong damaging wind risk. All right, we'll take a look at the tornado risk first off to kind of show you all uh, what I mean here. Pull that up. There we go. Uh, and we'll move it off to what it is right now. Here it is. Uh, large 5%. They mentioned the threat for strong tornadoes uh, within the storms that form before everything goes linear. So it's going to be a very small time frame. We'll talk about that here in a bit. But realistically, if you want the best shot at significant tornadoes, it's going to be right in here, right over in your Childress, Texas, and towards the Altus, Oklahoma area. I would watch out for uh, that area specifically for strong tornadoes. Specifically, I would even go as far as saying just this area right here in general. So uh, make a note of that here, especially as we probably will be live streaming. Actually, we will be live streaming tomorrow. So make sure you have uh, post notifications on if you haven't already. And then we'll uh, move off through into what another lesser risk would be. You see what it originally was here this morning. It was a 30% chance for hail, and then they decreased it to a 15% chance for hail. Reason being, well, the confidence in supercells forming has uh, started to kind of diminish on a widespread scale, and it'll be more of a linear mode. And so, therefore, a lower chance for hail is possible across the area. So 15% chance right there within that uh, yellow area, and then a 5% in the surrounding areas. This is what makes everything a little bit more intense. Look at what happened this morning, and look at what happened later on just, I would say, an hour ago. We have not only expanded the risk for wind, we have also added an additional color, and we have also added this kind of mesh-looking thing here. So 5% uh, in brown, 15 in yellow, 30 in red, and 45 in pink. All of those are the probability of seeing... Uh, damaging winds in upwards of 58 miles per hour or greater within a 25 mile radius. But you also see this hatched risk and you can also see at the bottom part of your screen right there that this tells you what your criteria is for significant severe wind. That's 74 mile per hour winds, which is hurricane force or above and anywhere within this mesh area is where you guys could probably see it. So uh, most importantly, if you're in this mesh area here, I would watch out for significant severe weather tomorrow. If you know anyone who lives within those areas, I would go ahead and just send them a text, say, hey, this is probably going to happen within our area and that you probably need to watch out. So uh, just something to note with that, with our wind probabilities. We'll shift off to Monday here as we still have the threat for severe weather possible across the Ohio River Valley. Uh, portions of Kentucky, uh, Ohio and Indiana are into it now, and it is no longer for portions of Tennessee. So uh, I'm not saying that Tennessee won't get their severe weather. I actually mentioned that the risk uh, could probably expand northward into Indiana and uh, Ohio. So it's just even though there's a lesser of a risk for areas over in Tennessee now, don't be surprised if you guys still get some severe weather. We'll try to go through this as quickly as possible because we've talked a lot about all the stuff that's happened and leading up into this. So we'll try and just get you guys a quick thing. This is our wind shear map. This is our 500 millibar wind shear, uh, which is about six kilometers above ground level. Here's our low pressure system right here. Here is our surface high pressure system over Florida. 
and we'll play it out here. High pressure systems create clockwise flow, low pressure systems create counterclockwise flow. So as this continues to move over time, wind shear continues to be relatively strong and intense in the upper levels as this pushes on through. This is going to be a big contributing factor to why the strong wind is what it is. And we'll talk about that a little bit more towards the end of the video. But very strong wind shear is evident over here. We have a negatively tilted trough, which is essentially when the trough starts to tilt negatively. If you were to draw a line from the bottom part of the trough here and uh, start to kind of parallel it, you can see that it forms kind of this uh, line that's leaning from the top left to the bottom right. That is a negatively tilted trough. If it was moving straight up, that's a neutrally tilted trough, or it's not even neutral. Uh, it's not even tilted, I should say. It's just neutral. And then if it's leaning the other way, then that is a positively tilted trough. So because it is a negatively tilted trough, uh, you would think it is favorable for tornadoes, but because of what's happening at the surface, it isn't really the case. And we'll move over towards our dew points here to kind of uh, illustrate that. We'll go back in time here and show you that early Sunday morning, there is not really a whole lot of surface dew points across the board to really help out with this. This is... Uh, due in part to a bit of a surface ridge that is sit over the area which has also suppressed our moisture down towards the surface and this has also prevented a lot of warm uh, warm air to really get down towards the surface as well essentially creating a more unstable environment i highly recommend you check out yesterday's video if you want more information on that uh, but this is also causing a little bit of a late moisture return a lot of our moisture to return into the area a little bit later than anticipated, which means that we won't really see a whole lot of moisture extend beyond the Red River. So uh, realistically, uh, this is the area to watch. If you are over here, you kind of see this little band that starts to elongate off of the dry line because here's our dry line. We'll talk about the dry line here in a second. Uh, but this little band right here, we've got a little bit of a meso low or a pseudo low that's developing within the line. Uh, or out in front of line, I should say, if there's a storm that forms right here within the uh, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock hours out in front of the dry line, those storms do have a chance at producing tornadoes. So that one would probably be uh, the one to watch the most. Those ones would probably have the best chance of produ uh, producing significant tornadoes as well. But the fortunate thing is that they're not expected to last for a very long time. The uh, line back here along the dry line, which the dry line is essentially a steep drop off of moist dew points to dry dew points, uh, that will eventually catch up with it with a more linear mode, a straight line damaging wind mode over into that area. Now, just for the people who are curious about the temperatures, because we made such a big deal about it yesterday, there's warmer temperatures aloft above the surface, but at the surface, it's still relatively cool. But if we take a look at the uh, model trends with the wrap model, one of my favorite models to use, uh, you can see that the models have started to trend warmer and warmer across the area. This is what it was a couple of days ago. You can see that we have a lot of 30s and low 40s in the area right here. And then we even have some uh, low 50s in this area. But notice how much it changes as you go a good 24 to 36 hours ahead of time. Things start to kind of increase temperature wise so this could hypothetically aid into some form of instability but if moisture doesn't get into the area in time if we still get a lack of moisture within the area this could also hamper tornado potential moving further on so just something really interesting to note that we're gonna have to pay attention to the observations here today the uh, soundings or the uh, METAR stations localized over Oklahoma and Texas if more moisture and higher temperatures at the surface rise, then we still have a pretty strong severe weather event, at least a uh, leading up to a tornado event that is possible for Sunday. If it's just the temperatures that increase, then it'll be a lot less of a tornado threat and a lot more of a wind threat. And then if it's neither that rise, then we're just still going to get a wind event, not really a whole lot of tornadoes. So now just something to note with that right there. Now, I haven't really talked too much about the energy because honestly, it doesn't really matter all too much. As long as you got about 1,000 joules per kilogram or, or above, you're still going to get some strong, severe storms. And we have that. We have some strong, severe um, capabilities because of the energy. We have about 1,000 joules per kilogram. Even in upwards of 1,500 joules per kilogram is possible over here across the Red River area. And you can just see how quickly it just gets sapped out of the atmosphere by those storms. So uh, we do have a small window of opportunity for this to occur uh, it's just 
can it take advantage of it in time now we talked about the dry line here why this is so important all right the big thing here is what's happening aloft so we note here here is our dry line we're taking a look at the dew points at 850 millibars which is about one kilometer above ground level and you note there's a lot of moisture out in front of the dry line and then you got a lot of dry air back behind it just like this and what happens is is that when you have the strong upper level wind shear that we uh, have with the 500 millibar wind shear it actually pushes the dry air out over top of this moisture and allows stronger damaging winds essentially meaning that if you had moisture over here and it was pushing into moisture think of it this way colder air aloft getting pushed over warmer air meaning will mean that cold air will want to sink further all right remember cold air sinks warm air wants to rise that's how cape essentially is a thing all right and that mixing will allow stronger thunderstorms but if you have drier air back behind cold dry air moving over that warm moist air there's a lot less moisture for the atmosphere to cool and so therefore you end up essentially you know speeding up the process a lot quicker and that will in turn accelerate the winds as it moves towards the ground and so that's the reason why dry line setups or any dry air aloft is so crucial to large hail strong damaging winds in this instance it's more of a strong damaging wind threat because of the lack of instability because of the lack of cape but still you got some strong damaging winds that are going to be because of that dry air aloft so just something to note with that as well and i feel like i've said that phrase over and over and over again so i'm going to try and stop throughout the rest of the video uh but here's the simulated radar this is the nitty-gritty of what you guys want by 5 p.m eastern 4 p.m central you get the possibility of some storms forming in the Oklahoma panhandle. And as things start to accelerate, we can expect rapid expansion of that line along that dry line. But what really is going to be something interesting is you note this little small storm out in front on the southern side. This right here, if this can anchor, if this can start to get a lot more intense and be discreet out in front of the line, those are the types of storms that are going to produce your significant tornadoes. So something to watch with that. But... Obviously, you can see that as we progress over closer and closer towards the 7 o'clock and 8 o'clock time frame, everything combines into a bit more of a linear mode. And because of that, you can already assume that we got some strong damaging winds associated with that. Now, don't get me wrong. Just because we have strong damaging winds doesn't mean that the tornado threat is non-existent. There will be some tornadoes along this line. There will be. They just won't be as strong. Um, but there still will be some strong damaging winds and tornadoes associated within the line. So just something to make a note of there. Don't completely rule out the tornado threat just because there aren't discrete storms out in front of the line. Uh, it is still definitely possible, and you can still see that that line continues to live for quite some time. We're approaching midnight here, and it reaches all the way over to Joplin. Very strong damaging winds, and uh, this is going to continue to be the case all the way through up until Monday to where we have some uh, pretty strong storms that continue to linger it'll pass through into st louis in the early morning hours and then of course into central illinois uh, by about 6 or 7 a.m and then this is when we start to get through in towards the afternoon hours a lot of these scattered showers and thunderstorms here is really what we can expect to be the severe ones mainly a damaging wind threat all right it's not really going to be a tornado threat and it's not going to be a hail threat main reason for that is because there's just once again a lack of instability it's just not really present in the atmosphere we got you know i would say about 200 to 400 joules per kilogram of cape uh, which is the energy in the atmosphere and there's just really not too much about it so um more of a strong damaging wind threat over there wouldn't be surprised if you guys got some uh, real sudden downbursts because we're still talking about that dry air aloft uh, that's going to penetrate in behind this line so keep in mind if you live in the ohio valley there on monday don't be surprised if you got some severe storms moving through in your area. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Turn on notifications. Share this with friends and family and on social media, especially because we will be going live tomorrow. So make sure you stay tuned to the channel. Hope you guys stay safe tomorrow. Uh, I did not put a community post yesterday for people who, to check if they uh, watch the live or watch the video. So I apologize. But... I will be putting one tonight, so make sure you guys uh, watch out for my community posts. 
and uh, whatever word I ask you guys to type in there, I'll shout you guys out in tomorrow's live stream. Please be safe, and I will catch you guys tomorrow. So peace out, everyone.